My brethren, peace of the Lord. We're happy <coughs> of in this meeting with our youth and say one thing and saying that the uh, greatest population of the youth is concentrated today in in Cariacica, in the city of Cariacica. But this is yet another reason to, uh, another responsibility because the group is greater, at least compared to other regions. Well, Villa Velha has many locations, Manings has Red, Terra Vermelha, and also Santa Monica. There are many other locations there. And Victoria also is distributed in many other locations besides Carapina. But well, anyway, here is the greatest concentration of youth. My beloved, we have understood that, in fact, these meetings are not simply meetings for youth. It's not about being youth. It's important that we have this group because it's not possible to place youth, adults, and adolescents all together. We don't have room for such a large number of people as we have today. So we decided to make uh, gr smaller groups, meetings of smaller groups. And we want to say also that we're very much interested that the youth are interested in what the Lord has for us at this moment. There's a word that is out there that don't know where they're going. And the brethren, uh, the Christians that, that even are interested in the Bible and praying, but they don't have a direction. They don't have a direction. It's not that they're guilty for this, but naturally, the structural, the religious structure that that, that they are under, they are not coordinated, they are not identified in a point which is fundamental, which is the moment in which the church is living. We are in a walk. The time is already finished. The world is ready to give all the possible lessons about what is good and also of what is not good. And our greatest concern is to save a group of brethren and deliver to them and to our brethren, to you, the responsibility that even some of our pastors are, don't have the means to. It's not that they are not spiritual, they are spiritual. But a few of them intellectually are not prepared for this. This does not remove the merit of what the Lord has done in their lives, in our lives, bringing us to a work of the Holy Spirit. And we have to understand that our pastors, the greatest concern they have is spiritual, is the spiritual gifts. You cannot want that our pastor go to a college and what he didn't have an opportunity to do, the ones that passed away, they, they don't have the opportunity to go back to college to learn a bunch of things so that they can talk about um, college grade talk. But what concerns us is that the youth have this responsibility regarding the future for the moment that we are living. They have to be beside the pastor to tell the pastor to give instruction and at the same time um, carry on their shoulder the responsibility and big instruction to the, the new ones that the, the pastor may have not been able to do. Today we speak about reason, we, we speak about philosophy, and people live of, of this. The, the world is the world of culture. The world is the world of what was prepared for the existence, and everything uh, turns to this time where the person wants to live as much as they want to live in this world. And that's what we're seeing. The world is, is not no longer uh, together. People don't know where they came from, where they are, and where they're going. There's a crisis that everybody call like existential crisis.
crisis. This existential crisis is everywhere. And when man begins to feel the weight of this crisis, there are moments in the life because people go through these moments. They don't know why they are born, they don't know why they are alive, and they don't know why they die. And when you pass by on the street and when you see human beings abandoned, dirty, like uh, long beards, like completely spent walking on the street, and we think, what is this creature is doing in the world? What is he living off of? He lives off of a piece of bread that he finds on a bat on the garbage can of somebody is throwing it away. I see it frequently. Youth, some even ashamed, they they look around and then go to the garbage can to find their their food. The spiritual life of man is like this. They are going to the garbage can on the streets. And this is not enough to sustain you. That's why many are living the difficulty of this crisis, the existential crisis. And later they get organized, more or less. They have a family, that, so they're not happy with their family, they're not happy with their wife, they're not happy with their husband, they're not happy with their children. They're not satisfied with work, they're not satisfied with anything. It's man in crisis. He doesn't know what to do. Who is going to help them? Is the world is upon them? Is falling upon them? Man doesn't know how he's going to uh, help himself. Sometimes he lives in the morning and the concerns of the day, the work, the betrayal that everywhere we have to deal with. People trust in their friends, the co-workers. It's a foolishness, and many have forgotten about the commitment which is the greatest wonder the commitment with the God Almighty the one who gave everything for us so that we might live a life in security we should not be afraid of the of tomorrow there's a song that says I don't know about tomorrow but for us we know that it will come it's not going to delay the more to tomorrow is here at our disposal the time for the church is coming to its end there's no time to wait all the events all the signs are happening the trumpets are proclaiming and they are sounding great events great occurrences are happening in the world and if we are waiting for the sound the one that Jesus spoke about of the sound that great sound of trumpets because there is no other sound because at the sound of this trumpet there is no go going back <coughs> whoever is not ready will be left behind so it's the sound of the trumpet so the world is out there the signs are also out there but our plea today in this great meeting that we are having with the youth of the entire country and also from outside of Brazil Oh, please that you take on your responsibilities in the life of the church what Jesus and what God has done and what the Holy Spirit is doing is to place in our hands the greatest treasure for the departure the great blessing of a people that has it's being prepared for this departure and we need to leave a message to the world we have had we have had today and tomorrow we have a few meetings outside of the country and there's a group of Israel that is going to these meetings in the former Soviet Union a group of pastors here from us there are going to be a couple that are going to other regions of Europe and other countries in Africa and what matters to us at this moment is that this group from Asia is a group there is a group that is coming from Israel the only thing they want is to hear this message that you are hearing here. They want to know of, of what is going on. And we need to give a legacy to them. Everything that is here is something that the brethren have no idea. We had a group, a brethren in Menang, and even a pastor, one of them from Russia, professor, 
of a great university in Moscow. He was a member of the Academy of Science in Moscow. And his specialty was about physics of water. He was invited by the United States to organize and direct the greatest laboratory in uh, one of the greatest universities in the United States. And he didn't accept it because he said the following. The time is this. I left communism. I left what everybody was living in, which was the reaction against uh, attack against God. It was a, uh, an atheist. But now that I accept that Jesus, my life is to uh, I want to give my life to the service of the Lord. We have a me we had a meeting of 200 brethren there, professors of universities, at least 15 or 20, only in the area of science. We had teachers in psychology, pedagogy, pedagogy, psychiatry, many teachers in the area of philosophy and law. And one of the teachers, one teacher was at a higher degree in, in the University of Paris in robotics and another professor in Purdue in the United States where he's at our disposal doing a special work of in artificial intelligence. He knew what is the concern of the brother that come from, um, from Russia. His concern was the following. You here, you may deliver gospel and speak about Jesus easily, but we, we had an inheritance of atheism Atheism there is scientific. What's worse is that I'm going to begin to speak to the brethren. The situation today is that there is a gospel that was that was uh, became scientific, a gospel that is being is being um, based on human reason on the fourth measure and people don't understand this and that's that's what what I want to explain to you here quickly what is being shown in the manner quickly but I want to bring to to uh, an ending we're going to spend a little time here but this is the class last class and I'm gonna pay your your dinner firstly you have already seen what was already explained in the beginning, here it is, the beginning of the creation. The beginning has a beginning, and then there was a, a finish. When there was a light that was created, everything was created here. Everything is creation. This is the principle. So in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Very well. So everything was created. So this creation here is different than this other way of life which is here. So we're going to make this small differentiation for everyone who is who are here. I'll call the attention to you. Pay great attention to this. You it will be made available to the brethren and all the social networks. So my brethren, there is no reason for you to be attracted by conversations. I've seen a group of youth that get out of the church, they are inside of the church and and then go out to take a course in philosophy, something foolish, and then afterwards they don't want to go back to church because they are why? Because they're disappointed with the Christianity that was inside of their head, which was not this. It was this. So we are going to see the difference between this Christianity and this gospel for this that God wants for our days. So when we speak about the beginning, Genesis, and the beginning, God created heaven and earth. We already know that word beginning in Genesis is in the Hebrew is reshit. So the relative beginning is relative because as beginning has an end. So the foundation of this creation is the matter. So the bread have to pay a lot of attention to the matter. 
light. It's matter. They are listening to us here and in the other place of Brazil. They should know that light is matter. There are 120 tons of weight of light per day over over the creative work over the world. You do know that light has weight, so light is matter. It's only matter. Reason is matter. Energy, if everybody speaks about electricity, is uh, matter. So everything here, which is in this world, uh, I made a phone call this week to one of uh, my of our brethren is preparing a work that I ha have requested, and I told him the following: Look, you need to prepare for me. I study regarding regarding the creation. When the Lord says, and God created, there may be light, and there was light. So then you see that this light it illuminated the world before, observe, before the sun and the, the moon, there was a light. There was light that was created. This light that was created today, the science. Place this light in, and very as uh, they observe this light in s over very aspects. Paradise said that the, in the clouds there was el electricity, so he transformed this electricity into mechanical uh, energy. So that's what we see: the engines, the generators. So Faraday did that. So then the French Lavoisier, he speaks about energy. So he says the following, in nature nothing is created, not is formed, not, not is created, not is lost, everything is transformed. I'm sorry, in nature not is created, nothing is lost, everything is transformed. So this was observed and it's very interesting that the word that is here and this with this energy from its creation, never lost a fraction of the energy that is here. It, it goes around. It belongs to a, a group of elements of which one thing sustains the other. Do you understand? So, for example, if you speak into Japan and the carry, carry a wave, that carry a voice, they are as linked to you as they are linked to the Japanese there. Imagine how amazing this is. Why? Because this is all part of a group. So we'll see about the topic of Einstein. Einstein said the energy is in the nucleus of the matter. So he asked him, brought something completely different. So after him, others came and said, no, it's not only the matter, it's an antimatter. And the antimatter has more than 12 and 13 elements that come out of uh, the antimatter. My brethren, this is something extraordinary. Today, we have the theories of gravity, and I asked the brother, you need to show to me when there is a coincidence of all of this inside of this universe. What is going to happen? What we are going to already know, there is going to be an explosion, and the light will be turned off. So this light here is not Jesus. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the light, and He gave the order for the light to exist. He, so because He was in the beginning, so so it says so the word who was Him it was an action. So there was light. So the action of the word. So in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. So now. Let me show you where I want to arrive. So when you create a religion based on this, on the p upper part here, I will ask. I'll, I want to ask you, who can contest this? Somebody may say, hey, if I base a religion based on this, I will please everything that is inside of human mind. I will put psychology, psychiatry, 
psychoanalysis and put everything here and place you instead of a religion. Today you have many concepts, you have telepathy, you have hypnosis, you have many things that you work with, the Chinese, they work with the mind of people and they do it in a very easy way. Why? Because they understand that you are part of this energy that the world has out there. You may be, even be able to understand that you are, but in fact this energy that you have belongs to your own body. It exists. You cannot say, oh, I'm, I'm here, I'm completely disconnected. So then China says, no, you do this, you do that, and you begin to have a form of a human. You have a little hair, eyes, and you begin to look like a human. So then they think that they are able to bring to you a few experts and place you in balance. So you are balanced with the world, this energy which is here. So instead of being this, then you have healing. But how about those that are dying? Everybody dies. They will pass. So it's possible for an individual to place something in his head and say and ask and tell you what you're thinking. So I'm bringing attention to the youth. A few are biting their nails to tell you this, that you need to know this, that somebody comes to you and says, bring something new. You need to know that this news is, it belongs to the, this creative work. I received a phone call from Rio de Janeiro. There is a topic. I asked this individual to make a, a work to, to explain it because he's a physicist. He, he deals also with in artificial intelligence. You're good, you're very intelligent, so make this. So we received a phone call. There was a group of pastors, evangelical pastors, high degree. They're they went to college in the United States. They are doctors in, in divinity. They are denying the gospel. You know why? Because they are based on this. They are meeting and they are taking youth. And uh, their youth are very enthusiastic about this. They are making, they are publishing stuff based on this. And this is our concern so that so you understand that this exists, we exist, we are, we are part of this. But when you go towards this, so then you take the material, so this is matter, so matter. So, very well, so now let's go for the question. I'll put a glass of water here for you who are smiling there. I'll put a glass of water for you, for you, I ask you. Is this part of this? Is the glass of water part of this? Very well. So now I'm going to ask you the second question. Does this save? Yes or no? Very well. Even though you are smiling with your girlfriend there, you answer right. So nobody's going to spend here an entire day without dating, right? It's not even this. As a very sympathetic individual there. It's a good one, huh? So, see here, when I tell you, if you buy this object here, and I ask you, is it in this creative work, yes or no? If it is, and I ask you, this creative work, is it what is going to take you to eternity, yes or no? No. The no is not very strong. <laughs> I don't like it. You need to be sure of this. So I, I'm telling you the following. I will describe what I think about God. I'll do what everybody says. Theology is a theology where I take a text and make an interpretation. When I take a text, a part of the Bible, and do an interpretation, am I here or there? Am I in the creative work? Am I in Reshit? 
am I in the creative work or am I in the cre redemptive work? So philosophy, theology, is science. So through science, we can you can never come to God. You can understand that God exists. So today, even I spoke to the individual, a pastor that came from Soviet Union. Their concern is this, is to show the science, they want to show through science that God exists. And then to say that there is a salvation here. Uh, people have already understood that God exists. The great concern is that they don't know where salvation comes from. So this is what is important. And the world today, the gospel today, plays this as a flag. The reason, the banner, the reason that he is here, he placed something that will enter into eternity, yes or no. Will reason, human reason, will lead you as to eternity? Yes or no? No, of course not. So I'm going to accept the gospel. So the difference is the following: is that the Holy Spirit, you place your know, human reason, an understanding of God's will. You're not going to change your reason. You accept or not. You may accept or you may not accept. But what is the change of understanding of the things that you live this life towards the other? What is it called? It's called the new birth. So the new birth in which man left human reason. He, did he get crazy? No. He was no longer guided by his own reason. So the text of Paul says the following. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I don't live in the flesh, I don't live in the human reason, but I live in the faith on the one who called me, the only begotten Son of God. That's the difference. So then you go to college, as a fake university, and they take a course of philosophy, and they are now philosophers. And I ask you, is this Christianity that is coming out here? A science is philosophy, and that people are understanding, because there's no course of theology without philosophy. So uh, they're going to take a course of philosophy instead of seeking experience with God. They're going to have experience with a philosopher. They're going to Lysimandro. They're going to after so many other philosophers that are out there: Aristoteles, Plato, and uh, other philosophers. Is philosophy bad? No, philosophy is everything that is out there. But philosophy does not lead men to eternity. Why? Because philosophy is of something that you know. Philosophy is of stuff that you know. So it's not revelation. Philosophy did not lead you to eternity. So the church, the struggle of the primitive church is the same of our days. What happened? It received a word by revelation. Paul said the following, because I didn't have information from anybody, but it was a revelation of God for us here. So the struggle of the church, the primitive churches, was this in Ephesus? Was was, it, was this that what they needed to bring was revelation, and the world came with the revelation against the revelation. And what is our great struggle today, in the future, in present? is reason against revelation. If you come to a determined place and you enter into a uh, class and tell the teacher that you had a vision, you're going to tell that you're crazy. And Paul says the following, I was not disobedient to the celestial vision. Celestial vision? Why? For Grippa, king? I'm very important. He knew the reason. He knew what, what it was to kill. He knew what what it was to imprison people, but he didn't know what revelation was. So then he said, this man is crazy. Remove him from here. Many letters Paul is making you go delirious. But you're not forced to say this, but you're also not forced to accept that a teacher from there will rise up and say something against what they cannot talk about because philosophy 
cannot deny to understand what is of human reason and what man produces. But when they want to inhibit this, is uh, there is no philosophy. Philosophy is inside of freedom of uh, thought, because we have here in Brazil the democracy. So see here, who understood uh, well? It's very good. He didn't understand very well. Is good too. So I'm going to go over here quickly. So now I'm entering in another type, in another world. <coughs> it's no longer the world of matter. No word about speed of light. So now I say light. Light is E is equal to M C2, E2. Energy can be the same here. Energy can be eternity. It's called uh, mass. Uh, and square of uh, of the uh, lies, which is revelation. So I can use the formula in place here. And in fact, Jesus is not speed. Jesus is revelation. So it's he's much more than speed. Speed, time. This is on man's measure. That's why we need to understand a gospel that transcends. A gospel that came from top to bottom is not the one that came from bottom from the bottom to top. Here at the revelation, the element is abstract because the Holy Spirit, the substance is not matter. It's an essence. It's something that was not generated by any person or created by any person. It's pre existence. So it says in the beginning this beginning is different than this one. It, this is different. In the beginning, it was the Word. In the past, the Word was in the past, and the, the Word was God, the Word was God. Nothing that was made was made without Him, because in, in Him there was life, and life, the light of man. So light, light, let's go. So what does he understand about light? Light is this. Light is going to be turned off. When we study revelations today it's fundamental that the youth the brand there are here understand that we're not speaking about this light here we're speaking about this false which is the greek the word has the old testament hebrew the new testament is in greek so this light is going to turn off and this is the light that will never turn off because it's not a light of reason it's the light of revelation it's not you who <coughs> have this light and this light comes to you so you don't produce revelation revelation comes to your life so see here I'm the light whoever walks in me will never walk in darkness uh, you see it I'm a, in a little haste but I'm going to speak a, a little bit about faith I'm going to ask you a question about faith in a few minutes uh, this is not it oh here it is so in the Old Testament observe there was no faith. Why? Because it was a pact of God with Israel. Faith was not had not been poured out because faith only began to exist in the resurrection. Why? Because it was given the Holy Spirit. So the element of connection between man and God began to be the Holy Spirit began to be the faith in the whole the New Testament. So in the Old Testament it was God. Then he was demanding, he was saying and man obeyed. So it was called in the Old Testament disobedience. The word faith doesn't exist in the says of Abacuc, which is related to a word in Hebrew which means emula, which is faith, emuna. This faith was imputed in the New Testament. It was not the faith of Abram. Abram was placed in the book of Hebrew. By faith, Abram, by faith, that man. So there was a faith that was imputed. It's not that this faith existed in the meaning as we see the faith in the New Testament because in the Old Testament, Man obeyed in order to believe. And in the New Testament, 
man believes in order to obey. Because you only believe in order to obey if the faith comes from the part of the Lord. If the faith is yours, manufactured by religion, you think it's good, and you put a glass of water and ask you to buy a, a red rug, I'm not against any of it. It's not a top that is not going to be interested to anybody here. And if you s give money to these people, this Breton, whoever they are, they're not doing anything wrong. But they're not consulting the Lord. The same way that they are not consulting the Lord for ma so many other things. You, you are here, or you only fail if you want. You have the information that are necessary for, for you. A lawyer called me to say the following. Hey, I didn't know why you were, you were teaching this on the seminar. I didn't understand any of it. But I was invited to a meeting, and that's when I began to understand how much the, the work of the Holy Spirit is so far ahead. I have no reason. I, I received gain. I was given three books. I'm going to rip them up because they were attached to a faith in the Old Testament. The faith in the Old Testament was an imputation. So faith is equal to obedience in the New Testament, the whole New Testament, and in the Old Testament. Faith is was obeying the instruction of the Father. <coughs> and here, faith is obeying the instruction of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, the life of man. So you believe in order to obey. So those are the action of justice of the saints. It's when you obey. If you're not obeying, so there is no faith. It is what is called the, the knowledge of faith. I know that Jesus is good. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. He was born and he died. Everything is all right. This is not the faith. The efficient faith is the faith that you walk in obedience without stop. So if you accept Jesus today, you don't have to obey the, your neighbor, your brother-in-law. No, you you have to obey the Lord. The Lord. Because whoever is beside you, is not going to pay the price for you. Whenever the judgment comes, it's going to be over you individually. So judgment is what is you're going to be destroyed. No. If you believe, you will accept the judgment. You'll be saved. If you don't believe, you're already condemned. Are going? Well, am I going to be condemned by my relative? Oh, because my mother-in-law doesn't want me to be Christian anymore. My girlfriend, she's a little crazy and she d told me I should not be a Christian I should go after this no we have to understand and f of what spirit we are or we either we made a definish definition or we are just like the world that's not the world the, the Lord wants the church with a part so see here faith is a firm foundation because it's based on eternity it comes through revelation it's not something that conversation I have filled with faith. It's just a bunch of lies. The faith that you make an exhibition of it, it's not the true faith. The faith is not based of external actions, human actions. So raise your hand. You raise your hand. Now go upside down and everybody goes upside down. So then you stand your arms like this so you have faith. So now shake your body. Go back and forth. So, my brethren, if you want to ex make an exhibition of yourself and want to see a party, so nothing wrong with that, but there's nothing to do with salvation or eternal life. We are fine with our brethren. See here, today our struggle are inside of a, a praise groups. Why? Because the individual has not understood that. It's 50 years of trials. We cannot sing a song, the Brazil. Brazil is singing the song of the independence. Instead of singing the song of independence, oh, I'm sad with Brazil, I'm no longer sing. So I'm going to sing the Argentinian uh, independence song. So it's not uh, Argentina that don't deserve it. Argentina is an amazing country. Good people, organized, very good people. Uh, even if we ex exchange Brazil and Argentina, Brazil would have been even better. 
because it's a people that love their nation. It's not what I'm saying. So I'm not going to sing a country for uh, sing a song for Paraguay or for China. Can you imagine sing a song no, in the day of independence of Brazil? It's the same as sing a song that was not created by the service of God. So the praise has, has its own place, has its altar, has a source, has a history. So you might say, oh, but this song of the past, eh? this song of the past, they existed. They were a result of inspiration. The tradition, as many things, what did it bring to us? That they forgot, they only remain the inspiration. They only remain the inspiration. The Bible is inspired. Instead of entering into revelation, they went to human reason, now theology it fell down here. So now I ask you, am I crazy? So then I take this, I give, I use my reason to decipher an inspiration. What do you expect? What do you want? You want revelation or human reason? What do you, do you want? Whoever prefers reason says yes. Nobody says yes. Isn't it possible? But outside, you're going to say, you're going to come up with stuff yourself. But here, you want to tell me, here's revelation, here's human reason, no. No, we want revelation. Why? Because the church is going to deliver the mysteries of the bride that the bride received from the groom. The church will deliver these mysteries. That's what we need. And the church needs to depart. What mysteries? This is the uh, red rug, is the plastic key. This foolish, foolishness, having a little string tied up on the neck, and whoever gives more money to the church. But I've seen a bunch of people being cured. Nothing wrong with that. If they are being cured, that's great because uh, the healthcare system is not taking care. It's not taking care of all the sick. Psychoanalysis, can it work? Can people receive a cure, a mental cure through psychoanalysis? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Psychi psychiatry also. If you get a little crazy, no problem. And you have through three zaps, you're good. After the third one, you're very good. You shake up on the first one, the second one, you're more or less. But the third one, you're already running. Very good. So, if you have self-help, self-suggestion, this is here. It's from the creative work. It's nothing to do with faith. So people can do this. Is it good or bad? I think it's wonderful. If I ever need a psychiatrist, I'll go to a psychiatrist, knowing that the psychiatrist will take care of my craziness. He's not going to take care of my soul. Do you understand? It's very different. He's going to use self-suggestion. You can't, because this and that. Why is that? It's f you can do all things. When I do this, I'm using the resource of the fourth manager. And does he enter in eternity? Yes or no? If you're cured today, you're healed from your leg. Shake your leg. You shake a leg. Is it shaking? Okay. Following days, your leg went to the other leg, so now you lost your blessing. You shook your leg too many times, and then you forgot about the second one. <laughs> My brother, I'm not speaking. It doesn't matter here. I don't want to criticize whoever is doing something with an objective, but we need to understand that salvation is not related to the material, to matter. It's a substance. Very well. So no, it's not over yet. We have five minutes. Please. We're going to take advantage of, of all the time we have here. Tradition, salvation, is you go to church and dive into the water and getting out of there. And glory to Jesus, I'm saved, saved once, saved forever. Paul doesn't say that. Paul said in the Philippians, I've been seeing Paul, I will see if I'm able to overcome. You know why? Because he had to leave the things that needed to be left behind. I leave the things that are left behind and I follow. 
towards the target of a sovereign vocation. So fellowship, I belong to a traditional church. Sixty years ago, you can imagine from the previous century, there was a meeting where the greatest authority in theology came from the United States. It was called. So you can search on the network. Richard Shaw. Richard Shaw was a the theologian that came to the Presbyterian Church to speak about communism. He thought about koinonia. However, he used koinonia as fellowship in this the in the social meaning, and he involved the youth. And from it, there was a seminar called Modernist, where they were only interested in the Bible by the latter. So men men had to be social. So in fact, it is even felt like they were right because the gospel that was up to this point had not brought anything. The United States had left 10 years without a single conversion. What kind of gospel is this? Someone going to give food to the people. So koinonia for them, the word koinonia for us is different of the word koinos because koin is related to faith, is not related to the be social beginning. You see my bread. He placed this on on the head of a bunch of people here. So communists, so there is even more, he said that communism taught him how to be a better Christian, a pastor, teacher of university, used to live in Campinas, in Sao Paulo. He convinced everybody there. And uh, there was open door for him in the entire Brazil. He spoke English and at the time he was a smart one. But he should come here and we would teach him the ABCs. For, for the tradition, body is the flesh, exhibition. In the United States, an individual gathered a group of pastors. Nobody was going to church. So he said, So let's see what is the best option. The one said, I said, Look, I have, I'm, having had good experience, I'm, I'm bringing a magician and he's doing. Magic, magical tricks. There's smoke coming out of his ears and nose. The children put uh, cigarettes in their mouth. He begins to teach, and it's smoke coming out of his ears. My brother, that's what the gospel is out there. Another one said, "No, no, I have a, I have a, a, a trapeze inside of the church." So there was an accident. And she left and got hurt. I don't know if she died. So stuff like this. And the, another one that had wrestling, the fake wrestling. And there was a bunch of people in the hospital with broken noses. My brother, that was the gospel of the flesh. Is this what you want? Pastor Lizogene, from this point forward, from the next seminar we're going to have here on the stage, something different. I'm going to bring one of them that like this to come here to the front to give us a show, a presentation filled, filled with uh, filled with tattoos. People don't understand the evil that they're doing to their own body because they're they're closing the pores. It is a horrible thing. Some put piercing on the nose and the tongue. Tongue, for example, if there's a cancer there, there's nothing that will prevent it from growing. Those are tissues are highly vascularized and filled with muscles. I cannot understand it. And this sensitive part on the, the eyebrows, instead of painting the, the eyes, you know, they put this shiny things on. They, they paint their eyes with uh, coal. And we're not against this, but the Lord has given a revelation just before we finish. The Lord has gave the given the revelation last Wednesday. The pastor said, "There's a group of youth is having difficulty walking. Their problem is in two things: in the and the haircut. I have nothing to do against it. You can cut your hair, do whatever you want. You can put like a mohawk and do whatever you want. Nothing wrong with it." 
But I've been saying this in relation to a few youth that are here. I'm not paying attention to anyone. If I meet you, I even think it's normal. Everybody's crazy. You just, just another one. <laughs> There's a place for you here. Some put like a, a Scorpio, and they put a, 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 a. There's another one that cut their hair, just painted on one side. That looked like uh, some that look like a poodle. That someone is putnik in their heart. Each one has a, a name. Go to the mirror and ask the Lord. Is this the mark that you have for me as a servant of God? We had a. A situation which the Breton uh, spoke to us there was a man that had just become a Christian and they placed in his head that he looked like a, a, a famous artist and he began to imitate the artist of television I'm not censoring anybody to do this or do that nothing wrong with that outside of the Brazil there was a group that did that we called them and said look the Lord has revealed that this is not for us yet, but it may be for another generation. And they stopped doing it. They were obedient, and immediately they did. In a cold weather, because the colder forces you to have a little more facial hair and stuff like that. So then we called the young man, and he began, look, we brought him and said, the Lord has given a revelation regarding this. You're not supposed to for you to have this look like that because you became like this. It was something new that everybody was doing. So we removed and he shaved. Two months later, there he was back again. Then we spoke to him again, once again. Did you forget? And he said, yeah, yeah. So then he, he became a nurse. He, Fifteen, Within 15 days, he was um, had an accident with a motorcycle on, and under a truck, and he didn't survive. There was an experience. These uh, uh, two marks prevent a few from walking. What is the percentile? Thirty percent of the people that have this kind of marks, they can't walk in the presence of the Lord. And ask Daniel in the den of lions. Can imagine Daniel more with a mohawk entering to the den of lions. Why deliver them? Let the lion in him. Now there's wearing a bunch of tattoos. I can imagine Daniel all uh, raped with a bunch of uh, tattoos and the lions attacking them, him. That's what it is. And then people think that those are such wonderful things and the word. The Lord says the following. I was going to take a course. And there was a good student. He was my assistant. He, he went to college. And I, I asked him, I need to go to the university, such and such. But before he went, he allowed his beard and muscle to grow. And one day, he came and said, Pastor, I'm going. I want to thank you. We are not going to pass your, your test. Why? Why is that? You are not going to pass. So when they came back, when he came back, he said, yes. I don't know why. He was a, a brilliant individual. But the, the group of the people that were supposed to judge whether he would take the course, they w didn't like his face. Also, there was a teacher that was taking... Uh, a test in order to teach in college and the husband came to me and asked Jedochi the first thing that she's going to do is to do, to remove the hair from her face she needs to show her face the teachers are going to be the panel that is going to decide whether she can be a teacher she has the hair in front of her face she's not going to be able to to be accepted she needs to show her face she cannot hide under her hair or a beard or anything like that I'm not saying this because I don't want to fix anybody you stay the way you think it you can in a few places we know that the 
presbytery know how to act. If you are a member of the intercession group, if you belong to the praise group, it's, it's good that you don't do, are not involved so that you don't bring a harm to others. We're not here to dictate fashion. A fashion is consult the Lord. If you want to serve the Lord, it's obedience. Faith for us is obedience. Uh, Jesus in me, I am Jesus. Jesus is good. He was born and died. He's resurrected. And that's in his uh, cod fish with a uh, uh, heart of palm. And you who are listening to us have the knowledge of what you are, of your worth, of what you represent to the world. You are not saved, in, we are not sought in order to be stomped on. The world cannot stomp on you, and the world stomps on you. If the salt has no taste, it's not a salt. God made Jerusalem. Why God? I'm coming to the end. Why did God make Jerusalem? Because he want, wanted a place of adoration to his name. You know, what, what was there? The women, they, they make noise like uh, snakes. They profane my sanctuary. They bring things of the world inside of my sanctuary. So the, the destruction of Jerusalem, if Jerusalem is not created to adore the Lord, why then Jerusalem exists? If the work of the Holy Spirit is not going to lead to eternity, why having the work of the Holy Spirit? If you, if the person doesn't want to listen to the Spirit, so don't leave room for someone else. You have the right to be a servant of the Lord here or anywhere. And the world needs to respect you. The world will respect you, not because you're rich or because you're good-looking. The world will respect you because you're a servant of the Lord. Faith, war and inspiration, praise for exhibition. Is this? Are you going to change? You're going to change. We hope that you take care of this. I, my throat has run out. <laughs> Not even the pastors. Brethren, you want to see the gospel that is out there? The two greatest doctrine is the, are the blood and the word. Where is the difficulty of the two doctrines? 
what is that the ones that who are here in the human reason understand about blood? What is the blood that they are speaking about? The blood that Jesus washed me, the blood as power. What is the blood? The biological blood, the one that the Jesus shed, it was left on, on the ground. They don't know this one. No, not this one. This is the blood, is it the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus. The blood that he shed was the Pentecost, was an illustration of the Pentecost. You see the difference, the fundamental difference. So here, who is here? It's in the redemption. Whoever is in the creation is another measure. The word is here. And religion comes out of this place. And I'm going to tell you one thing. If I were to create a religion today with this, I would take half the church with me. <laughs> I would begin with the pastor. I would take half of the pastors here. Only in human reason, invent a bunch of crazy things. Oh, he's smart. He's intelligent. Look, my brethren, let's take it seriously. The pastor had a spiritual gift. The Lord has given a vision, and I saw a great stadium, soccer stadium, and the whole world was there represented to watch the youth. They wanted to see the youth in a soccer game. And I thought that the youth that belonged to the work of the Holy Spirit, they formed a team. They entered in the stadium. But a detail that I noticed is that the opposing team had a defensive system that was very strong, very well done. It was very difficult to pass it. So there were two instructions that were given that were going to give victory to our youth. The first instruction was that every attack had to be done from the heights uh, and not to it should not be done from the bottom because the defensive system had uh, did it very easily over the top when you did like a head strikes I've noticed that the, our team would uh, score many goals and another detail was in the defense defense of our youth so in the in the position of the back keeper the goalie was in the position of the goalie was a lamb the lamb is our defense but a few youth uh, hasty uh, youth they wanted to remove the, the lamb because they saw the dimension of the, the goal. They were afraid. We're going to lose it badly. But the order was that the lamb had to be remain there. And they were all amazed with one thing, because the, the lamb was all-knowing. Before the ball went there, the lamb already knew where the ball was going. And it was omnipresent. Before the ball arrived, the lamb was already there. He was almighty. No matter how strong the ball came, he was stronger. And the youth had a great victory. And all the glory of the victory was given to the Lamb. My brother, the Lord has given a revelation. There are a few youth that are sick, my heart, and they walk. And there is a detail. They left this place healed. They left this place, and to those who are listening to us, um, um, want to communicate. You are also in connection with the, the group of Madrid, and Pastor Pirajar, and also Pastor Lerontin, with the Pastor in Barcelona, in Spain. They're going to do here, finish confessing the name of the Lord Jesus. Not only us here, but all of those who are with us. We're going to say to the Lord that He is the name. We're going to say publicly that the oppression which is here trying to attack you is not going to have a room in your life. We're going to say, accept the sinner only instruments very softly. And at the moment, we're going to confess Romans chapter 10 verse 8 to 10. Let's go. Our brethren, they are far away. Our visitors, youth, brothers, friends, 
Romans 10 8 with me together everyone all the ones that desire but what do does it say the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart that is the word of faith which we preach that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Uh, glory to Jesus. Still, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we're going to pray for the youth. The Lord has revealed that we pray with uh, laying of hands about what the pastor was saying. We need to place our lives in the presence of the Lord and placing our hearts in the presence of God. We heard many important things for our walk as Christians. And the servant uh, in the morning, we, we also need to pray to the Lord so that we may have strength and we may be able to put all those things in practice. Those that desire may kneel down. We're going to pray for the brethren so that the Lord may be blessing the life of the brethren. The Lord also has shown in a vision that the youth, they were going to a, a training camp. And each member of the youth, they were trained. Uh, in the use of the sword and notes that the youth they were going to a battle and they were going with an assurance that they're going to be victorious they have all their weapons and I noticed that they were amazed with the, their ability with the of the youth and with the conviction of their victory in such a way that they uh, fought and people asked what was our secret and we showed where well, we showed our sword and our sword was bathed in oil and it was shining and we presented our swords there to our general and pastor Renew is saying that this charity is dealing well with the sword the word speaks of the word of the Lord. We're not going to overcome our trials. They are ahead of us. If we don't understand that the word of God is the reference for our entire lives. The youth have a lot of concern of what I'm going to do, what I'm going, who am I going to marry. I remember an experience that was very important for me. I came from Curitiba and the pastor from that church was a servant of the Lord, was married for 40 years. And there came a moment in his life where he needed to go to college. And the church was praying. I was a deacon in the church. We were praying to the Lord. And he had an illness that was very ser serious. The pastor needed a transplant on an organ. It was a very serious infirmity. But the Lord placed in his heart to go to a college. And the group was praying. And one day, he received a phone call in his house and the person on the other end of the phone was asking is it the phone of um, the teacher and s said his name and then said I'm the person but I, I'm not a teacher how come you never taught uh, uh, um, uh, but and they're in the, the yellow page there is there is a your name and your phone number. He, uh, he went to the yellow page. He went there. There, w there was his name with his f his own phone number and with address. Something nobody can explain. How can you put this kind of information? You have to pay. But he understood the following. He went to college. He, he, now he is a professional in this area. He understood that that was the answer from God. If you want direction to your life, seek the Lord. Pray to the Lord. And that's what, that's what was said this morning here. And also the Lord has revealed that many youth, they were confused 
regarding many things. The Lord has shown that this confusion came from a great concern that many have had with their personal life, with the things of their daily lives. But the Lord says the following, Seek the Lord, seek first the kingdom of the Lord and His justice and all the other things will be added on to you. So the secret is to place in the things of the Lord in the first place in your life. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Blessed be given to you, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, be given to you, Lord. My children, this morning, I brought, uh, gathered here in this place to speak to our lives, to speak of a project, of a blessing that I have for each one of you. And I tell my children that I know each one of you individually. I know of your trials. I know of your questionings. I know uh, that of everything that is risen beside you and ahead of you. But I tell you, my children, that this world has nothing more precious to offer you than what have been placed in front of you. The peace that was poured out for my son, salvation. Yeah, he left for you the blessing of the Holy Spirit that guide your lives and give, bring security, bring comfort. And I tell my children that all those things are placed at your disposal. The church is your family. that continually has interceded for you, has pleaded for you, has, has prayed in favor of our lives. And many prayers have come into my presence. And I tell you, Great blessings have decreed upon each one of you. Do not sadden. Because the word that is out there doesn't have and does not know what you know, which is a living God, which is a pro eternal project. You are part of this wonderful project. So glorify to the name of our your God because salvation has been delivered to each one of you and my desire is that each one of you may remain firm and secure so that you, one day you will be in eternity in my presence or if I may name because my blessing is being poured out upon you and my spirit and walks amongst you and he blesses you and renews you and removes the things that are old in places in you, something new, an eternal hope that only those that have known my son have been able to reach it. Glorify my name because my blessing rests upon your lives. Lord to Jesus. Always. Lord to Jesus. Always. Amen. Lord, we this moment want to praise your holy name for your teaching, Lord. Your word has been left in our hearts, and we ask, Lord, that you may continue blessing your servants, Lord, preparing them to face the world, giving them authority to say no to the things that are offerings from the world so that may have the discernment that they may be sensitive to your voice and may be obedient to your voice bless them O oh Lord so that they may be a blessing whatever they pass by at home on the streets at school at work in everything that they may be able to praise your name that may be able to see your glory. Is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. Amen, Lord.
the church may be seated. Tonight we're going to have the service, normal service, 7.30 in the churches. Uh, the brethren, please pay attention, invite the visitors, those that have been the target of our prayers. Amen. If anyone desires a prayer, if there is a doubt and a clarification, we are here at your disposal. Also, need uh, the man to help out and uh, disassembling of the things. We want to thank those that are coming here, visiting us, and participating with of this blessing. And this month is the month of the youth. We need to pray for them, for you. S and pray for the activity of the youth and meetings, visitations, special services. So the brand may be praying for this topic so that the Lord may use the youth with great grace. Amen. And I say the peace of the Lord to everyone. <laughs>